here are some tiles I have chosen for the flower pots. I am planning to use some black tiles for here right. and for here. It's always good to have a dark rim on the base and on the top of the pot. And I'll probably start off with some darker tiles on the top and some lighter tiles in the middle. These are blacks. We have made a lot of tiles during the Corona times. These are the black ones, obviously, and these are the white ones. And these are some clippers which I use. They're actually glass cutters, but they work on our homemade tiles really well. If you would like to know how to make mosaic tiles, we have done a few tutorials on our channel. And if you need to know how to stick mosaic tiles or how to grout tiles, there are some videos on our channel too. Got my adhesive here. A little bit bunny, but not too bad. I've started sticking the first tiles down. It's a little bit hard to see in the sun. I hope it's easier to see on the video. It's not difficult to do a flower pot if you know how. It can get quite tricky because you're not working on a flat surface. So if these tiles don't stick, they just start to slide off and then it can become complicated all of a sudden. So I'll guide you through step by step on how to make a mosaic flower pot. Here is my first row finished. It's really important that it sticks nicely. I can see it's grabbing already. The glue is grabbing already. It takes a little while, but I think I stuck it down a few minutes ago and it's actually getting better. So it's not gonna slip off. It's always good to be tidy. <laughs> so I have uh, less problem af problems afterwards. So. so. This is the first row finished. Yes, I've changed my mind. I thought I'm going to do a black rim, two black rims actually, but I'm doing it differently. I've seen this kind of black and white piano effect in some other piece somewhere. And I've started doing this. I think it looks really good. So to make a connection between the bottom and the top, I've added some more white in here too, so it won't look so odd. I might change that later on again. But this is really the base of the pot, so nobody's going to look too hard. You know? Up here I'll continue this little bit of a piano effect till I'm closing in back there. This is where we're gonna hop and see what transpires. In the meantime, I have abandoned the green tile idea. I have stuck on one of these and on the other side one of that. That's nice green and red. And I was wondering how I can do the transition between these piano looking tiles and make my way into here. So I have decided to uh, abandon the green idea. I won't use any green tiles. And instead I've cut myself some white ones and I started here with the triangles to form a transition which will join into here. So I'll leave it at that because my grout, uh, my adhesive has also come to an end. Here we go. And uh, I probably will continue up there. So join into here and uh, then I'll see what it looks like. I've got a rim, the black and white tiles are here and I have got a rim where these triangles are sitting on. So we can't see this really well at the moment because the camera is the way it is. Um, 
but it will nicely make it join in and make sense later on. I'll give it another whirl. Oh. Hello and welcome back to our mosaic tutorial. Um, I'm going to continue on the mosaic flower pot I started yesterday. I changed a few things around, as I'll show you in a minute. And let's get started. Um, as I said, I've changed my mind. I changed a few tiles around. That's as far as I got yesterday. And these are the tiles I'm going to use. I had green ones to begin with, but now I'll use these cream ones, which we've made. There is also a variation in color. They're a little bit more green. These have got a bit of a texture. And they're a little bit more white. Here I've cut myself some white ones and some black ones for the bottom here, for the base here. Actually, I've made this all black, but then I changed it. I wanted to have a little bit of a piano effect here. I've seen it somewhere, don't know where, but I like the black and white idea. So I thought I'll give it a go. Up here I had all black the other day, and so I removed that, and I'll make it black and white, but not as regular as here. And here I put some red and green ones in which I really enjoy and to highlight these red and green Vesica Piskis the ones we have made all these, all these tiles are actually made by us um, I want to add some gold and I've got a pot here which uh, I found in some odd shop it's a really nice gold. It's a little bit low fired, but that doesn't matter. It'll be fine. And um, I'm, I have cut these little golden tiles here. And I will actually add it here. I'm not quite sure how, but to highlight it. I just know from experience that white and gold works really nicely. So um, I'll keep going with the rim here the base of the pot and once that once I've done that I'll get back to you so I'll be off to mix my glue here I've got my pot and there I've just mixed my glue that's the right consistency I need here are my tiles so I'm keep going there. I've cut a few which I use. I've taken some off yeah, from yesterday. It's important to have a little bit of a gap there. Yeah, because um, I have the tendency to have it up here quite high. And then whenever it stands on a flat surface, it's got tendency to knock, get knocked off. So it's better to have it a little lower down. I'll do black and white, black and white, black and white, but sometimes are a little bit black. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Not to worry. There's one from yesterday, a pre-cut one. And I really like the, the golden color and I actually cut one out. Why not? Give it a kind of different feel to it. Yep. It looks a little wild here. So, yeah, because it's on a curve, it's got the tendency to slide down. These flatter ones are a bit different. It's always good to stay tidy. This is a little runny, the adhesive when it's a little firmer when it's hardened up a little bit it will be easier to stick okay. so. Let's 
good to have one of these so I can turn around it can turn it around nicely but you don't have to a piece of paper on the surface and turning it around is just about as good but the turntable makes it easier so pot is actually bigger than, than one might think takes quite some time to go around so I'll meet you again once I've closed in on, in on here I've finished the rim up here put a gold in here and there I'll take advantage of the lovely afternoon sun we've got Hop. And yeah, I've done the base, I've done the top, and now I'm going to fill in some white tiles here and there and everywhere. And the gold ones I planned to use as kind of rays here and there, and actually working the way I wanted it to work so I'll just highlight the white ones when the time is right okay I've finished the rim up here and now I'll keep going down there these ones I've done yesterday so I'll keep my way working up here in between these gaps that's the advantage of a triangle is you can put another triangle in to just match do it here and so that's how I keep mosaicing it's always good if you have got a row already nicely stuck so you can match it in there but that's not working why is it not working the good thing about mosaic is you can always you can always change it anytime. If I don't like things, I can easily just take it off, reasonably easily. And that's the charm about mosaic. I'm never stuck with a certain thing. I can always change it, even when there are things I don't like at all, or even when there are things which are very very stuck I can always chisel it off so that looks wild every time I'm mosaicing so just a kind of wild mosaic huh? I guess and yeah so I'm just filling in this here the gaps I've cut myself these triangles they are a little bit thicker than I usually have but because it's a flower pot, I don't have to be too precise. So I try to keep it tidy. Here it looks a bit wild. I'll just keep going. I see if it fits, and then I butter it like a bit of bread. So. In our other videos we have shown you how we cut, so I'll show you a triangle here. When my camera artist comes around here and turns the camera to my task, thank you. So these are actually rather large triangles. That's fine because it's a biggish pot. It doesn't look so good if if you go cutting tiny tiles. It doesn't mean that it looks any better. Sometimes it actually looks more interesting when they're larger, especially when it's a nice tile. So I just work my way up to here. Put some. I've decided to put some golden highlights here and there, which I will do. And if I have odd gaps. I'll just put a gold one in, a small gold one, like this here, for example. What is this? 
no? Yeah, they actually look really nice. Little highlights, and here that's not really a triangle. I'll get it in anyway. So, these are all homemade tiles. They are cut hard to cut, reasonably frost proof. They can survive winters outside if it's not too cold. And I just keep mosaicing my way up to the top. Here I've got an odd gap, so I'll just take these and I'll put a bit of sticky on there. Up. And here is also a little gap, and I also will put a little golden one in there. Because it's soft, I can still push it out of the way to make it match. Here I've made a bit of a texture. These tiles I particularly like. These ones, they're also a nice texture. I put a bubbly plastic into the soft clay and it made a really nice effect. Oops. As the day is closing in, my project is coming to an end too. I've finished the white up to here, as I planned. And I've added some gold, which I think looks really nice. Not as hard the tile as the white and black ones, which I made, but it'll be just fine. And here I've had a bit of a ridge, as um, I tried to explain earlier. That's just where one part of the pot goes over into the other one. And I've made a golden line just along there, which will come out as a golden line. It will look really good. So this is an open mosaic. It's open meaning there is no grout on it. I'll get some grout tomorrow. We always use a dark grout on white, on light or the white tiles and on darker projects we tend to use a kind of off-white or sanded gra um, sand colored grout. On this one I probably will use for this one, I probably will use my favorite grout. Um, it's a charcoal ground grout. In German, we say anprazit. It will look pretty good. It lo still looks a bit rough because I've got adhesive sticking out. Um, it's a tile on tile adhesive, a real strong one, which will bond really firm to the pot but at the moment as it sets it doesn't dry but it sets because it's part of concrete talking about this here yeah. so that's what it looks like and as it sets it tends to become really weak so I can easily knock pieces off while polishing. That's why I prefer to use a wet sponge and be really careful with it. Or what I can do, I'll just wait for an hour or two and then I can polish it off again. And once I started grouting, it will polish itself anyway because the sand in the grout um, tends to um, polish the glassy surface of tiles, so that works really well. I just um, leave that for today. Took me about mm, altogether two hours to work. This is the size of the pot, it's a normal sponge, just to give you 
a feeling for the size of the work. It's a larger pot, a medium size, I'd say. And yeah, I think that's it for today. Here is my finished flower pot. I've crowded it with a dark crowd. I'm very pleased with it. The dark crowd really makes the white tiles stand out nicely. I'm also very happy with the black and white idea. And I love the golden specks. I think it looks great and it's got a little bit of an art deco feel to me, for me. And um, I'm going to put some soil in and I'll put some flowers in it and it will look super. It already looks super.